Hi, my name's Mandy and welcome to my YouTube channel, What Mandy Made Next. Today is Thursday the 17th of August 2023 and I thought I would pop on mid-month just to show you what I'm up to with my projects. So today I have crochet, cross stitch, knitting and some quilting to share with you. Now, quite a sizable chunk of this vlog is donated to the starch method of applique. And if you're not interested in that bit, you can skip on um, because I've time stamped, like I say, down below. OK, but I'm hoping that um, you will stay for the, all of the vlog, that um, you enjoy it. And if you do, please give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I would welcome any comments from you as well. So let me talk about quilting first and let's talk about the Riverside Knoll. This is a quilt pattern by Kim DL. She's also designed the fabric range called Writer's Rain and it's manufactured by Henry Glass Fabrics. Now this was a workshop, there was a series of them and they were doing a block of the month at Liberty Bell. You've heard me talk about Liberty Bell so many times, but you can shop online as well. But anyway, I was attending these workshops and I thought I really want to keep up with this block of the month. Well, you know how things happen. Within the second workshop, I'd fallen well behind. I put a folder together and I've put all the instalments, I think there were six workshops, so the six instalments, and I've popped the blocks in where, with each instalment, and I've also sorted out all my fabrics, because I'd left it so long, I mean, this was last year, this block of the month was, I'd left it so long that actually I was getting a little bit mixed up, and I thought, I want to get the quilt out of the way and done with and uh, you know for those of you who do watch me regularly you know that I do different crafts on different days but I just wanted to get this quilt block you know the quilt finished and out of the way I really do so I've been working on installment five so this is near the end and these are hourglass blocks. I'll just show you one. You'll have to excuse all the threads on me board. But they're these hourglass blocks. So I've pressed them all. I've made them all. And they have a rail, a rail fence. What we call this strip here is a rail fence. And um, I've stitched all the rail fences to the hourglass block. Aren't they beautiful fabrics? Right, I'll show you just one more. I'm not going to show you them all because, you know, let's get a different colour. Here we go. From what I can gather, these will be stitched side by side and this will make up some of the border. Beside the hourglass units, I also had to make up these rail fence uh, units as well, these little blocks. So, those are all done now and they're all pressed as suggested on the pattern. So yeah, I've got quite a pile. I'll just pop my design board there. Quite a pile done now. So that's instalment five. And I've only got instalment six left to do. And those are the four outer applique blocks. However, let's talk about applique. I've gone right back to the beginning. So I've gone back to the very first instalment, and that's because I wasn't pleased with how I'd applied some of my blocks. We used the interfacing method, which I'll explain in more detail in a moment. And I went to one of, I think it was the second or third workshop, and there was a lady there, and she'd used the starch method, which I'd never heard of, to applique her 
blocks and when I looked at her work I mean she is very neat anyway this lady is I mean she's been doing this a long time and uh, yeah her work is absolutely astounding so I just thought oh you know that looks so much better than mine and uh, I decided I would redo these applique blocks using the starch method now this is the center of the quilt it's a churn dash block and um, I've pressed it and I've measured it and that is the correct measurement for that so that's okay but the second bit of instalment one was four applique blocks now this is one of them i've just finished it using this starch method and they're these pomegranates and they go in each of the corners this is left loose hanging because when i come to stitch this together I have to open up a little bit of that triangle there and this will feed in to that triangle you see it'll just go inside it there but we'll come to that later but if you're interested just um, search in YouTube for Riverside Knoll and there's a couple of quilt shops that will come up in the states that have actually stitched this. This next section is going to now show you how I've used the starch method to applique my blocks. So this is the corner applique block. Um, and this is one I've just completed using the freezer paper method. And I just think it looks so much neater than the method I was using before which I'm going to explain about now so like I say this is installment one um, the center block is the churn dash block and yeah I'm happy with that it's the four corner applique blocks that I need to redo so yeah I've used embroidery floss initially and as you can see it just didn't look very tidy so I've just decided to go with the freezer paper method instead of using interfacing initially I stitched the interfacing you stitch it to the right side of your fabric shape and then you make a little slit at the back to turn it inside out so basically You've stitched the interfacing to the right side of your fabric. You cut, um, make the slit at the back and then, like I say, you turn it inside out. And there you've got your shape. And then you just insert something inside just to, you know, get those little points out and make it as neat as you can. But like I say, you've got to be careful when you stitch it to the block that your interfacing doesn't show through. I mean, that doesn't look too bad. But I think the freezer paper was just far neater. I also found that as I was stitching, the fabric was bunching up. So, yeah, I mean, look at this one here. I mean, I just couldn't get the points as neat as I wanted. So I use Reynolds freezer paper. You can purchase this in most supermarkets now or craft stores in the UK. I put the shiny side down onto my paper pattern and um, and then I can draw on the dull side the template. One thing to be aware of is some patterns will actually um, show you the back to front or you could trace out your pattern and then when you come to cut out your fabric it could end up where it is actually back to front. But with this pattern, it's symmetrical, so it doesn't matter. I also thicken my template. Once I've cut out the shape, I will actually iron um, the freezer paper to another piece 
um, so shiny side to dull side so that um, it's a little bit thicker so anyhow there we are I've put it on to my fabric and then I just use a hot iron and adhere the template to it and then I'm going to cut around the shape and I'm going to leave a quarter of an inch at least a quarter of an inch margin I'm using Dylon spray starch, um, any spray starch will do, and I'm just going to spray some of this into a receptacle. So when you do this, it'll start to foam up. As you can see, it's foaming now. And just leave it a few seconds and it'll start to settle down and then it'll go clear. Once that's clear, I then dip my paintbrush into the starch solution and just paint around the edge. If you get any on your template, it doesn't matter. You can just um, brush it off. But um, yeah, I make sure that the edges are quite um, well laden with the starch solution. I mean, I'm just showing you what I do, but there is a really good demonstration by Joanna Figueroa in conjunction with Kimberly Jolly from the Fat Quarter Shop showing you this method. Now, I'm going to pop a link in down below in the description box and please go and watch Joanna because she is so neat and so precise and explains this procedure so well. I've taken the shape now to my ironing table. Please excuse the scorch marks. I'm using an awl and that's to manipulate the fabric and hold it in place so that I can press with my iron the fabric into place. I'm using a sweeping motion as Joanna suggests. Now I have popped another link to a YouTube video down below in the description box and it's called Applique with Swan and she's using a trolley needle that fits onto a finger um, instead of an awl. I've just used an awl because like I say I haven't got a trolley needle but if you haven't got an awl you could always use the end of a metal teaspoon so you know. We have to improvise sometimes when we haven't got the tools. Okay, I'm just going to check the other side. Now, it's not a perfectly round. You can see a couple of points there. So, the starch is now dry, you see, because I've used the iron. So, what I do is I just get some best press and give it a little squirt and then pull the fabric, you know, manipulate it and then give it a repress. So yeah, you can just see another little point there. So just going to give it another little squirt. You can see the fabric opening up and then I just re-manipulate that little bit and press it down. If you haven't got any best press, you could just give a little squirt of water or reapply your starch. There we go. All ready. Now I'm just going to take the template out. And I do this by letting that cool down. And then I'm just going to take it out quickly in one motion one movement there we go so i'm just going to give my block a quick press just so that the fibers can relax a bit and mesh back together 
because you could see some of the holes um, where my previous stitching had been. Um, just about the freezer paper template, I can reapply that again uh, when I come to make the next block, you know, the next shapes for my next block. It'll still have some uh, sticky there. I also need to repress my stem. So as you can see, um, this is just a tube and the stitch line needs to go at the back of the stem so it doesn't show. And I use Quilters Bias Bars for this. So this is something new I learned about on the workshop. And this is what's great about workshops, you learn so much. So the bias bars are metal and you slip Select the bias bar which corresponds to the width of your stem inside the tube there and then you manipulate that seam to the back of the stem as you can see and then iron it in place. So once um, that seam's at the back I wait till it's cooled down and then I remove the bias bar. I now need to apply the pieces to my block. So what I do is I trace out the pattern onto a piece of plastic. So I've just used a poly pocket, just cut a poly pocket, um, this square out, trace the pattern onto it. And now I can see exactly where the pieces need to go. I'm just securing it in place with some pins so it doesn't shift about. I'm just going to slide the stem and um, the main part of the pomegranate underneath the plastic there just to give you an idea of um, placing the applique, how I place it. So once in position, you then just need to secure your shape to the fabric. Um, you can use pins, fabric glue, heat and bond. I'm just going to pin my shape in place. On previous shapes, I have used my heat and bond, but it can work out quite expensive. So there we go. This is now ready for stitching. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch. I either use the Bowen applique needles or the Tulip Milliner needles. Today I'm going to use my Milliner needles because the eyes are a little bit bigger. But either Bowen or the Tulip, they're really good. They just slide through your fabric like butter. I'm just using some ordinary thread and I've got my sharp embroidery scissors. The Tulip um, needles come in these cute little, like little vials, aren't they? And um, yeah, I'm really pleased with this needle. It's lovely and long and flexible. I mean, I think I'd use this for hand quilting as well. You'd get quite a few stitches on there, wouldn't you? But, um, yeah, like I say, it's really flexible. So that's what I'm going to use today. I was watching a lady called Anne. I'll pop a link in down below. And it was on the Laurie Allison's channel. And um, she was saying that when you come to applique, use a cushion you know i've just got one from my lounge and pop it on the table and then pop your applique on top of the cushion and she says that helps to keep your posture straight and helps with strain on your shoulders so i have done that and i must say i find it so much more comfortable to sew um and i've also sat and you know in the front of the television watching tv with the cushion on my lap so yeah really good idea so i've been watching a lady called kathy 
Van Bruggen. I'm going to pop a link into her channel down below. Um, I was just looking how to stitch properly uh, the applique shapes. And she was saying that when you come up, so you do your little knot and you come up from behind and you come up through your shape, just on the edge of the shape, uh, less than an eighth really, just the edge really. And then you go down into the main body of your fabric and that's what I have been doing. That's the back of my cushion. <laughs> it really does help with the strain by the way. I must say, making this quilt, you know, it has been um, a real eye-opener for me, a real learning curve. But, you know, I enjoy learning new techniques. And, uh, yeah, I'm hopeful that um, the result will look good. <laughs> two more of these blocks to finish Do you know they take they take me ages because I'm trying my best to be so neat and I've done two and you know they take me a day to do believe it or not they really do so yeah I hope you got some tips there that's my tip of the week <laughs> the starch method of applique but I am going to do an ABC of quilts and I'll show you some different ways but um, yeah, so that has been taking up most of my crafting time because I really want to get this quilt finished, hopefully before I go on holiday. So do excuse me in advance because I'm just recovering from a really bad chest infection. <laughs> On a Tuesday, I've been working on some of my cross stitch. It's a small project. It's called Sweet Tomato and it's by the Scarlet House. I purchased this pattern from Patchwork Rabbit. I'm working this on a 32 uh, count linen. It's uh, a Belfast one and it was just the scrap I had left. So I've overlocked the edges. It was great fun, I must say, counting the holes just to make sure that this pattern would fit on it but um yeah i've worked some of the words obviously where my hoops been has restricted me finishing off some of the sentences but um yeah i'm not doing too bad at all i think there's only a letter and a word missing off that now so the tomato, though, I've used my threads from Stash because I've got that many threads. I mean, if he saw more threads coming through the door, he'd be... <laughs> so, 
I'm using DMC, you know, stash from your DMC, but the actual tomato has worked in candy apple. Yes, it is. And that's um, a thread by Weeks Dye Works. And when I looked on Patchwork Rabbit, they were sold out, although I have put a notification on. But if I don't know if I can see closely. Uh, let me see if I can bring it up. There's Because Weeks Dye Works, it's dyed thread. You get the different shades. And with DMC, I won't get that you know the different shades it'll just be one color but i do want to get this finished but i'm just thinking maybe i ought to wait on and perhaps look at trying to get hold of this candy apple but i am going on holiday to florida soon and um i can probably get it over there source it quicker than here but um yeah I've just made my mind up. I am going to go for the Candy Apple by Weeks Dye Works. The rest can be worked in the DMC, DMC stash. But yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Because a lot of work goes into cross stitch, doesn't it? I've bought the alternative DMC red for it. But yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I've made my mind up. So that's what I've been working on on a Tuesday. So, so on a Wednesday I like to work with wool so I either knit or I crochet. So the first project I'd like to show you is the Tin Can Knit Beloved Hat. So this is living in this project bag. I love this project bag, I really do. And I wanted to knit my two younger granddaughters, the sisters, a beloved at each and some matching mittens. So this is the first one. The wool is Stylecraft. It's a double knitting and it's in the Heather's range and this colourway is Wild Salmon and it's absolutely beautiful. I don't know if it's showing up but there's sort of mauled lilacs and dusky pinks. It is a beautiful colour and it's got the eye cords for fasteners. So these are the two hats knit. Can't wait to see them in these. They're so cute. Like old fashioned. Use the German short rows and that cinches in the neck. Absolutely beautiful. And then I've used a free pattern by Tin Can Knits and it's called the World Simplest Mittens. So this is the first, well I've knit the pair. I have to excuse it, I've been a bit naughty and put the wool needles in. Because tonight I just want to sew in all the ends on the hat and the mittens. They're cute. There we go. So that's for the youngest one, the mittens. And I'm just knitting. I'm using the DPNs Knit Pro Symphonies to knit the next pair of mittens this will be the bigger size the child size it's got a really good cuff they do say you can shorten the cuff but i think on the little one these cuffs are so long it'll be really good because it'll keep the mitten on i'm toying with the idea you know in my day we used to crochet a chain and tie the mittens together you see and then we'd feed them down the sleeves of the coat so they didn't lose the mittens but you know i'll have to see what my daughter wants child safety and all that but that's my knitting i wanted to knit another pair of socks because i think if you're going somewhere you can just grab your bag which is living in the socks living in here and you know you're away aren't you you haven't got neither too much now i knit my socks toe up i'm using a just an easy vanilla sock pattern. It's by Nurturing Fibres. It's a free download on Ravelry. I don't knit the afterthought heel. I have done before. I like to use, um, oh, what's it called? Flegel heel. He has his own little sock recipe, although I have increased across the number of stitches. Um, I've cast on more stitches than usual to make the toe a little rounder. 
So this is the Reggie yarn. Um, it was left over from my last pair of socks. So I'm just increasing at the moment. I always use Magic Loop when I start. And then when I get onto the main body, I will then go on to my DPMs. Because I prefer that look. I'm use, uh, for the main body, I've got this here. It's Yorkshire Spinners 4 ply wool. And this is the Bullfinch. I've nearly knit all the wild bird sock range now. But uh, yeah, I thought that would be good fun to see how that knits up. So while I'm on about socks, sorry about the crackle of paper. It's what I call order treat delight. So this was a sale in Holly's Aberdashery. So if you go on to Holly's Aberdashery, I'll pop a link in down below. She has a sale on for the Berger de France wool. So this is called Gumi 50 and it's a four ply. It'll be the usual mixture. Yeah, 25% nylon and then you got your 75% it says wool, I don't, virgin wool, yeah. So, this is one of them, and they're only 50 grams, but I think I'll get a sock out of that as long as I do the toe and the cuff in the contrast, but I thought that was beautiful. And then I've got that one, this one, and I bought that one. So that's four balls of the Gumi 50 wool. So that's another four pairs for him. And then I bought myself this one. This is in more muted shades. So we'll see how we go with that. Now for crochet, I've started the Yuletide blanket because you may know I'm trying to crochet each of my three daughters a blanket for Christmas. Uh, last, the first one I've made is a spring frost, and this is the Yuletide and the By Attic 24. Now, this colour scheme I think is absolutely beautiful. The light like jewels. Uh, the wool is again, it's Stylecraft, it's a double knit, and I bought this as a pack. So I thought these sort of colours, especially the teals and the greens, would go with my middle daughter, Carly, her colour scheme at home. So I thought I can just see it in winter time with this draped on a sofa. Yeah. Now, I can't tell you, I've struggled with this. Although Lucy at Attic 24, she's very good, she puts clear instruction and there's pictorial diagrams. I also need a schematic. I need a, you know, when I'm crocheting to make sure I'm going in the right holes. And I think I frogged this about three or four times because I just couldn't get it right at all. But I'm persevering and then enjoying it. Thursday is my full coverage day for needlework. So, oh, look at this. This is my Twilight Calm. It's a Dimensions Gold Kit, which I purchased over 10 years ago when I was on holiday in Florida. And I'm working, I was working on the mini sea beacon, but you know, I saw this peeking out and thought, I'll have a look at it. And, oh, I couldn't put it down. So I've been working on this section here. If I've got a picture or some video, I'll pop some up of what it was like um, a few weeks ago. But I have worked on the cabin now and this bit of uh, water in the boat. And I'm just working on down and I want to get this all stitched here. And then I think if you look there, that's more or less the end of the the edge of the needlework the cross stitch so i've just got that to work down and it'll be finished well it won't be i've got to do the the couching on it so there's back stitch and there's couching but um 
yeah I should have done that as I went along but I didn't I'll be doing that at the end and I might do a little bit of a video showing me couching but isn't it glorious look at that I absolutely love it and I've loved doing it so that's Thursday Friday I usually like to make a garment and I haven't done because I just won't get this quilt finished so yeah that's what I've been doing on the other days it's just been donated to that quilt I want to get it finished I really do <laughs> So now for my whip go for 2023. I did explain about this in my last vlog. However, I'll pop a link in down below so you can head over to Jessie Marie Dustoff and she will explain in her video how to set up a board and how to play it. The concept was originally created for cross stitches, but she does say you can apply it to other crafts, which I have done. So these are all planned crafts. So this is my whip go board. It's just a five by five grid and you number it one to five across the top and so on till you got your 25 numbers in. The middle space is left free. You can pop a project in there if you want. Yeah, it's like a bingo board. So I have populated each square with either a planned project or a project I've actually got in progress. And then my goal, I've decided that I'll work on one of the crafts for 15 hours each month. So every month, usually around about the 27th, uh, Jessie Marie draws randomly two numbers. And she will post those numbers to either Facebook, Instagram or on her channel. And um, yeah, you then go to those corresponding numbers and you work on those two particular projects. So I've already coloured in, in a yellow colour, all the numbers that have been called and for January the numbers 6 and 10 were called so that's a big knitting project and a garment sewing using scraps. So my personal goals are 15 hours each month for each project. As you can see I've already applied some little orange dots each one donates one hour. But the big knitting project I'm going to talk about in a moment. I've already chosen that. And as for the garment, um, I'm going to make my grandson a little jersey t-shirt uh, from some scraps I have. So once I've achieved the goal, I will then colour that particular square green. Now this is a long, long time ago. You may recall, if you've been watching me for a long time, I purchased this wool probably about five years ago. It's an Arum weight, um, Bergère de France again. I think this is a sport weight and Vasso, that's the colour, Vasso. And I was knitting initially the Yule Grand Jumper, which was designed by Andy Satterland. And uh, Sarah, who owns Holly's Aberdashery, said, don't knit it in this because the tree will not show up. Anyhow, oh, yes, yes, I want. And, of course, I got halfway through knitting it and it didn't show up as well. So I frogged it and I knit my old gran in a lovely, I think it was called Seaway, but it was a teal colour and the wool was from the West Yorkshire Spinners, if I remember rightly. Um... And I'll pop a link in to that particular uh, vlog uh, donated to the old gran. But um, it was a lovely, lovely jumper. So then I decided, right, I'll knit the Boreal. And this was a pattern by Kate Davies. And I absolutely love the Boreal jumper. But I've frogged this about 
two times now. This is the main body. I mean, it's a lovely jumper, actually, isn't it, when I look at it? When I'm holding this up now, I'm having second thought to frogging it. I really am. I might go ahead, actually. What do you think? It's a beautiful... But when I knit the sleeves, they were really... I mean, I've got big arms anyhow, but they're really tight. But I've read some tutorials by Andrea Mowry, and she was saying, when you knit, because you knit in the round, see the sleeves, when you knit in the round, especially if it's colour work, you need to knit it on bigger needles. Because there is a tendency, no matter how careful you are, trying to make sure that you're keeping your floats at the back um, quite long so they won't be too tight. She says there is a tendency when knitting in the round a small area, you're going to you tighten up. So actually now, because I was thinking of frogging this, but actually I think I might carry on. What do you think? Yeah. I've got all the wool, like I say, yeah, do you know, I'm going to carry on, there's me talking about frogging it, I'm not going to, what I'm going to do is, th this is now ready, I want to be careful, I've got no stoppers on these needles, this is now ready for the arms to be joined, the sleeves, so what I'm going to do, is I'm going to start the sleeves, but I'm going to knit the rib and then I'm going to work on bigger needles and see if that makes a difference because it was rather tight on my arms you see yeah that's what I'm going to do so yeah I'm quite uh, motivated now so that's number six and then the other project was number ten uh, a garment using scraps to sew a garment and as you can see I have marked off with orange pen the number of hours I've donated to doing that so I was so I did so um, a little shirt for my grandson that's a couple of vlogs ago using scraps up you see so that's what I'll do I'll make another little shirt for him and that'll be my whip go for January completed so I'll update my whip go as I work through my projects <laughs> I think that's it I've got so much to go on with as usual so hopefully next time I see you I'll have my quilt cover top pieced ready to be backed I'll have a dress to show you and some update on my knitting and crochet projects my cross stitch so until I see you next time Bye. Oh, and if you haven't already, please subscribe and give me a like. Bye now. Mm -hmm.